Oh, hosted. That's what it is. Okay. Amen. If you love Jesus, say praise the Lord. I'm glad you're here. Well, let's pray for the offering today. Father, thank you for giving us today faithfulness. Thank you, Lord. There's certainly a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. And Father, we want to help to populate heaven and plunder hell. Lord, we pray today that this day is a day you designed and set aside for the gospel to go forth in an uncompromising way. And I pray, Father, that you'll always help us as a church family right here at Church Alive to be faithful not to compromise your word, but to declare the whole counsel of God. From every letter to every line, from every precept to the dawn of the eye, the crossing of the T, we pray, make us more and more every day a Bible-believing people, a Bible-standing people, a people that stand faithfully on the promises of God. We love you, and we have felt your love a tremendous way already in this room. Bless the gift. And bless the giver, I pray. And everybody sing. Anoint us, give us ears. 
ears. Somebody say, give us ears. Give us ears. To hear what the Spirit has to say. To hear what the Spirit has to say. Amen. 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 God bless you, man. Amen. Let's give her a great God bless you. Reward 
course, not just to have a place in heaven, but to, to just do it for the Lord, for the love of the Lord. Right. And in hell, there's many levels. We read about it in the Bible. There's the deepest hell and the lowest hell. There's all kinds of levels in hell. Even the best level in hell is horrible. Yes. But there's levels on the other side. You either go to heaven or hell, but what you do on this side will determine your place on the other side. So it's very important for us to use our time, the time that we have left, to, to the best advantage that we can. Yeah. Uh, I, I want you to uh, talk about hell today, what the Bible says about hell, and it says a lot. I want to get that over with, and we'll talk about heaven next week, okay? <laughs> Believe on Jesus. 
Jesus. Believe he is the way to the Father. Believe what he did on the cross for, was for us. And to receive him as Savior and that we could be born again and never have to go to, to hell. And so this message, I just want to say, it's, it's, it's hard to listen to. And, and, and it's, it's hard to think about. Mm. But we need to listen to it and we need to think about it. All right. Because people all around us are going to hell. Thank God probably most everybody in here is born again. But you are surrounded by people who are on their way to hell. And God has given us the Word of God and the Holy Spirit and oh, His yes. function. Yes. And given us a commission to minister the gospel, to win as many people to Jesus while we can. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hebrews 9, 27 says, It is appointed for men once to die, and then the judgment. Everybody is going to die. Young people, I might like think they're never going to die. Kings and rulers, I might like think they're never going to die, but everybody is going to die. Those of us, if we're alive, and I believe many of us will be when the rapture happens, when the church is taken up to be with the Lord, we even kind of die in a sense while we're going up because our old body is replaced by a new glorified body. Right, amen. right, amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. But it's, in, it's appointed unto men once to die, but after that, the judgment. Christians will be judged before Christ for their works. That's not what we're talking about today. But one day all of the wicked will stand before the white throne judgment. They will not be able to hide from Almighty God. There won't be a mountain high enough for them to go to. A cave far enough for them to hide in, nobody will be able to uh, hide from Almighty God. All will stand before Him to be judged by Him. We believe we're in the very end of this age. End time prophecies are being fulfilled so rapidly we can hardly believe what's happening before our eyes. Last year, atomic scientists get together as they do every year to move the hands on what they call the doomsday clock. Uh -huh. These scientists aren't a Christian group. They just represent different uh, countries of the world and just atomic nuclear scientists. But last year they moved the, do the hands on the doomsday clock to 100 minutes to midnight. Because even they know that this time is very short. Mm. That any time everything can be over. We have a missionary friend who, who lives in Israel now with his wife. And um, wonderful godly people. And he messaged me this morning and he said, Diana, from Israel, and Joe, he said, um, I'm on the southern Lebanese border. I'm here with CBN. They're, they're doing a special on what's going on in Lebanon and the borders of Israel. And he said, I want you to know that in southern Lebanon, right today, one in every three houses has a missile in it pointing toward Israel. These people, they use the Hezbollah around, they use innocent people who cannot say no, they're controlled. And they put missiles in their homes. He said, right now, just in southern Lebanon, there are 4,000 missiles pointed toward Israel. He said, yes, there's an armed dome. Yes, we can ward off many of these missiles if they decide to, to fire them all off at once, but there's no way we can stop them all. And he said, even in the last few years, these missiles are a lot more sophisticated and powerful than they were even a short time ago. And he said, I really believe that any day that these terrible wars are going to start. And we had some conversation uh, back and forth about that. But let's just stop a minute. Lord, can we pray for Israel today? Yes, yes. God, we said in your word, Lord, <laughs> If we would pray for the peace of oh, Israel. Oh, bless Israel. And God, we pray.
pray for Israel. Pray for the people of Israel. We pray the peace, the shalom of heaven to be with Israel today. Your protection on your people, God. We ask Father, us we to pray, pray. In the bless them, we bless them, Lord. We pray for a mighty revival, God, among your people in Israel. In that part of our world, Lord. And every day, the Jewish people will come to recognize that Jesus is Messiah. Hallelujah. May your glory, Messiah, be exalted more and more every day in that part of our world. Israel and the Jewish people all over the world. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we're very close to eternity one way or the other. And uh, maybe somebody will hear this message today and, and you aren't with God where you need to be. Don't put off getting right with God Come on. another minute on. by another day. Amen. Because once you take your last breath, there's no more opportunity. Uh, God has always had a plan for eternity, and He has had a plan for everything from the beginning to the end. In Isaiah 46, 9, 11, He says, For I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there's none like me, mm -hmm. declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, things that are not yet done. Say, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Indeed, I have spoken it, I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it, and I will do it. In Matthew 7, 13, and 14, there is a scripture about the gate. Jesus said, enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go by it, because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way, which leads to life, and there are few who find it. You know, the world loves to twist the Word of God and put its own spin on the Word of God. What the world is saying today is... <laughs> Wide is the gate right. that leads to eternal life. Right. Wide is the gate to heaven. Everybody can go to heaven. And there is no narrow gate to hell. There's only a wide gate to heaven. The world is preaching a false gospel. Mm -hmm. Many churches are preaching a false gospel. True. There's only one way to heaven, and that's through the shed blood oh, yes. of Jesus Amen. Christ yes. and the salvation that He provides. Amen. Psalms 39, 4 says, Lord, make me to know my end and what is the extent of my days. Let me know how transient I am. On uh, a, a website I ch checked out, World of Leaders, some other places. I checked out how many people are going into eternity. It says here, last year in our world, and this is from 193 countries reported, there were 56 million deaths last year in our world, thereabouts. 56 million people went into eternity. There are 153,000 deaths a day, 6,390 deaths an hour. So I guess, Pastor, while this service is going on here, probably this year, at this time, 15,000, 16,000 people in the world are going to go into eternity. My goodness. 107 deaths a minute. Last year, by the way, there were over a million suicides in the world. And there were approximately, that we know of, 3,000 Christians martyred for the faith. People who say we who believe in the rapture are escapists. And, and don't want to go through anything, that we need to go through things because the apostles did, or whatever. Come on. Don't you know that Christians have been martyred ever since the time
time of Christ. Right. Christians have been persecuted, tortured, killed, chased out of their homes. It's true. Suffered greatly for their faith for 2,000 years. Right. We haven't escaped anything. Christians have always been persecuted. We've been blessed in our country. But because the way things have gone in our country, it looks like the top clock might be ticking toward the end. Amen? Amen. Amen. Last year, almost 43 million babies were aborted. Come on. I just wanted to throw out those statistics real quick. How many people are dying? All right. Why, why are we going to preach about hell? In Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 18, it says, When I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, and you give him no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, that same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. That's a very, very serious statement in the word of God. God was telling Ezekiel, but it's the same for us. <coughs> That if we do not proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, if we're not bold enough, if we're not courageous enough, if we're not committed enough to the Lord Jesus Christ and dedicated to him enough to try to do everything we can to win people to Jesus Christ, their blood is going to be required at our hand. Come on, Diane. That is a very serious statement that the Lord made several times in the word of God. And he wants us to take it very seriously. I, it, I'm here to tell you that, that the devil is relentless in trying to, to get souls into hell. Ever since he was kicked out of heaven and knew he would never get to go back to heaven again, he purposed in his demonic heart that he was going to try to seduce, tempt, trap, and snare every man and woman that would ever be born into the world because every man and woman born into the world is created in the image and the likeness of God. Every man and woman born will have an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as Savior and be able to go be with God forever. He will never have that chance again. So he's going to do everything that he possibly can to get people to go to hell, to ruin their lives, Come on. Right. to make their lives yeah. miserable, to torment them, vex them in any way that he can. And um, praise the Lord, the devil wants you, hell wants you, hell wants your children, hell wants your spouse, hell wants your family, hell wants you any way hell can get you. Right. And hell won't quit trying to get you until the day you die. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 5 says, Therefore hell has enlarged, enlarged herself, herself and opened her, her mouth wide to receive you. Isaiah 14, 9 says, Hell from beneath is moved for there uh, it wants to meet you at your coming. It is stirring up the dead for you. Hell wants you. I, I'm here to tell you that Demons and devils cannot read your mind. Only God can read your mind. That's very clear in the Word of God. But demons and devils are everywhere. And they're watching you. And they're listening to you. And, and they get their information from what they hear you say. And from what All right. they see you do. All right. And a lot of times you don't even know it. But by the things you do and the things you say, you are telling demons spirits how to attack you. You're telling them where you're weak. You're telling them where you're vulnerable. You're showing them and giving Come them on. information that they will use against you. And, and you say, well, that sounds really far out and, 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 and you're too focused on demons. Well, that's what the Word of God says. He goes about as a roaring Come on. Come on. seeking whom he may devour. Right. He's Exposing. And that's why it is so important for us in our lives to ask the Holy Spirit to make us always conscious uh, of what we think and what we say and what we do. Because
because we don't want to give any information to the enemy that he can use against us to prey on our weaknesses. And many times when we do things that we shouldn't do, watch what we're not supposed to watch. Play around with a little sin thinking we can handle it. Doing this, doing that, that we know that we shouldn't do. Did you know that we're entertaining demon spirits? That we're entertaining devils Come on. say, watch us Come on. and let their chops trying Come on. to get us more, even more into what they have for us. This preach, is not a preach. message, but it's preach. a true Come message. Come on, preach. Lord, that's why the psalmist said, set a watch before my mouth. Set a watch. Keep the door of my mouth. Set a watch. Incline my heart to Yes, Lord, Jesus. That I may not sin against you, O oh God. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. There are a number of Bible names for hell. You see, hell is a holy place. It, 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 it's called Sheol in the Hebrew. It's called uh, Hades in, in the Greek. We call it hell. And sometimes Jesus referred to it as the valley of, of uh, Hinnom. And it, it, it's in our life, if somebody is arrested for a crime, they are taken to a jail and they are held in a jail until they come before the judge and their case is reviewed. And then when their case is reviewed and they are, they are guilty, they, then they are sent to prison to serve out their time. Uh, hell is, is like a jail where, where the wicked go when they die. It's a holding place. It's a horrible place. It, 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 it's a place of fire and brimstone, but that's where they're held. And they won't go to their final destination in the prison that the Bible calls the lake of fire and brimstone until the, the white throne judgment. But there's a number of names for hell. There's even a special uh, place for the fallen angels who apparently sinned with women eons ago and they're having chains waiting for the judgment. It's called Tartarus. But hell is, is a very horrible place. Now I'm going to tell you what it's like in hell mm -hmm. because we need to keep it before us. Mm -hmm. And I'm here to tell you there's been times when I didn't do what was right because I love God. There's times when I didn't do what was right because I was just being a good girl and a good Christian. I'm here, I have to tell you, there's times in my life when I've only done the right thing because I was afraid of hell. All right. And I'm not trying to scare anybody and use scare tactics. Remember, a God of love warns us about these things. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is, hell is more worse than anybody can imagine. And once somebody goes to hell and they're due for the lake of fire, there's no way out. There's no escape. It's for eternity and eternity. On eternity. Mm -hmm. There's no exit sign. It's too late. It's too late. It's too late. It's too late once you draw your last breath. Any excuse you make not to get saved won't be good enough. Once a person goes to hell, it is total darkness. It's the darkest of the darkest night. The only light seen in hell is the light of the fires that are burning all around people. Everything else is total blackness, total darkness, and no light. The only sound in hell is the sound of people screaming. The only sound in hell is people crying out for mercy even though it's too late for mercy. Because the only time we can have mercy and get saved is while we're still alive on this earth. And, and, and hell is, it is so terrible. It says it is a place where the worm will never die. Some people, theologians say that is talking about the memory of a man. And, and, and people will remember the times they were witness to. They will remember the times their parents would Come tell on. them, you need Jesus, you need to get saved. They will remember all the times people tried to reach them in the upper 
opportunities that they had to get right with the Lord. And it will eat at them. It will eat at them. All right. And other people say that it's talking about the actual maggots that feed on bodies when they decay and when they die. Because the, the bodies go to hell. They keep burning and burning and burning for eternity. And that the maggots never quit eating on them. And one time I read that at the, at there's places in the bottom of the ocean where there's these fissures where, where fire comes out, these fissures in the bottom of the ocean floor. And you can look this up, and I think we talked about this in class one time when we talked about, but, but these huge worms, somehow they're able to live and thrive around those vents of fire. They're called riftia. You can look them up. They get to be eight feet long, and they live and, and thrive around these openings from, from the fire below. I think it's probably all of those things. People will never forget their opportunities, and the maggots will feed on them forever and ever. The Bible says that hell is under our feet. The Bible says that hell is in the center of the earth. The Bible says that that's where the wicked will go, down into the pit, down into the flames. There were rebels who came against the authority of Moses and Aaron when they were going through the desert. And they re rebelled against them. And, and, and they, they, they didn't want to, to follow the ways of the Lord. They wanted to follow their own ways. And God warned them and warned them and warned them. And the Bible says in Numbers, that, that finally God was fed up with them. He gave them all the chances he was going to give them. God is a God of love. But there is a time when, when God says, enough already. You've had every opportunity. You're not going to receive me. You're not going to obey me. You're not going to follow me. It's all over. And you're going where you've decided you want to be away from me forever and ever. But when these people rebelled against God, the Bible says that the earth opened up in front of them and swallowed them down into the flames of hell. NASA says, by their best estimates, that the core of the earth is 12,000 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, it's going to be a horrible, horrible place. Come on, Diana, preach. People say you can only reach people with the love of God. And again, I want to say this is the love of God. For God so loved the world. Yes. He gave his only begotten Son. Amen. That whoever would believe in him would not perish, but could have eternal life. Hallelujah. In hell, there's no blood. There's no blood to save anybody. In hell, there's no Jesus. In hell, there's no cross. In hell, there's no, no compassion. In hell, there's no friends to pardon with. In hell, there's nothing but eternal hopelessness, despair, grief, and sorrow, and torment. Listen to me today. Mm. If you don't know Jesus Christ as Come your on. Savior, today is the day yes. of salvation. Yes. Nobody is promised tomorrow. Come on, preach. You're not promised the next hour. Preach it. You can die any second. We all know people who just drop right. dead and they don't know that they're going to drop dead. We, even if the rapture, just not even talking about the rapture, any of us can die at any second. Come on. This is a hard message. I think God and the message is letting me preach it because so many preachers in the United States of America and around the world do not preach it. They're saying, Come on. believe on my God and you'll get rich. Believe Come on, on my preach, God and you have anything you want to have. Preach. Believe on my God and you, you, will, you can do what you want to do. Go where you want to go. I tell you, they're going to stand before God's going to account. They're picking and choosing. Come on. Preach out of the word of God. God wants to bless us. God wants to prosper us. He wants to yes. be good for us. Yes. But God is also a just God. Yes. And those who rebel against Him and reject Him and stand against Him, I'm here to say an old fashioned word. You're going to go straight to hell. Yes. All right. Preach. Hallelujah. Bless her, Lord.
Bless her, Lord. Jesus talked more about hell than he did about heaven. Many times he referred to hell. He said, don't fear the one who can hurt and destroy your body, but fear the one who can send you to hell. Destroy your soul, yeah. In, in Matthew 8, he talked to his disciples about the importance of, of living right before God. And he said, if your hand offends you, cut it off. In other words, if your hand is causing you to sin, Come on. cut it off. Cut it off. That's our loving Jesus said this. He said, if your foot is causing you to sin, cut it off. Pluck it out. He said, if your eye is causing you to sin, pluck it out. Did he mean to do that literally? I don't think so. But he was saying anything in your life. Come on, Diana. Come on. That is causing you to sin. Get rid of it, no matter what the price. He said it's better to go through life maimed and blind than to go into everlasting fire right. forever and ever. That's what Jesus said. Powerful, powerful. Y'all still love me? Yeah, good word. Preach. Bless her, Lord. Okay, here's a good one. <laughs> A lot of controversy about this. I just wait on the pool. <clears throat> Can a Christian go to hell? Can somebody who's confessed Christ go to hell? You know, a lot of people preach today. Once you accept Jesus Christ and trust Him as your Savior, nobody can pluck you out of God's hand. You are saved forever and ever and ever. And you may say to them, what if I'm called an adulterer? You're still going to heaven. What if I'm called murdering somebody? You can still go to heaven. That's a lie. Yeah. Revelation 21.8, the very end, almost the end of the book of Revelation. The Lord says in 21.8, in who's not going to heaven? The ones not going to heaven are the immoral. The ones not going to heaven are those involved in witchcraft or sorcery or drugs? Mm. The ones not going to heaven are those who lie and cheat and steal. The ones not going to heaven are doing all of these things. <clears throat> I want to find the scripture here. Go back in. From 2 Peter. Check all this is in my book. And I, I didn't do this to make money. I do this to get people right. saved. And if this book will help somebody in your family get saved, I hope you'll make, you know, just, or, or yourself, just do what you have to do to get them saved. Second Peter 2, verses 20 through 21. If, after, they have escaped the pollutions of the world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome. The latter end is worse for them than the beginning, for it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn from the holy commandment given to them. And there's other scriptures like this. In other words, God's mercy and love is boundless. But we can re choose to reject our Christ if we want to. Uh -huh. And I don't know a lot of us here know people who have done that. They were once saved, maybe even filled with the Holy Spirit, witnessing, living for God. Then things begin to happen and they begin to stray from God. And the day comes when they don't want to have anything to do with Jesus anymore. They don't believe in Jesus anymore. They're out of the world doing what they're going to do. They're willfully, continually sinning over and over. Willfully, continually what they're doing. They don't care. They're not asking God to forgive them. They're going on. Come on. And when they say, Jesus, I don't want you anymore. He says, okay. 
You don't have to have me anymore. Now, I, I don't want to maybe unduly alarm people who are fighting a battle with your flesh. You're fighting things and you're trying to get the victory. You know, there's people who get saved and come to the Lord and all of us go through temptations sure. at times and sure. trials at times and we all miss it at times sure. and we all do things we shouldn't at times and sometimes we go through seasons where we're, we're, we're not doing what's right and we know we're not doing what's right. But we, we don't we're not happy about ourselves and where we are. Right. We don't like what we're doing. We know what we're doing is wrong. And we keep falling down before the Lord and saying, I'm sorry, Lord. I don't want to be this way. I don't want to think this way. I don't want to do this, Lord. And, and, and Lord, forgive me and help me to overcome this. Come on, Lord. preach. We're, we're fighting a battle. We don't like it. We don't want it. We're fighting it. I'm not talking about people who are fighting a fight and trying to overcome the flesh and the world and the devil and the victory. They still love the Lord. I'm talking about people Come who on. don't care about him anymore, don't care about God anymore, and don't, don't even want to repent or care about repenting. I believe you can lose your soul. Yeah. The Bible says, how do you know people who are truly born again? The Bible says you will know them by their fruit. You will know them by the fruit that they bear. You will know them by the words that right. come from their mouth. Right. You will know them by the way they live their lives. Yeah. And you can tell by the countenance on somebody's face whether they love the Lord Jesus. Oh, or that's not. a truth. That's a truth. Kind of strong, isn't it? Preach, preach. Hallelujah. Good word. A uh, long time ago, late 1700s, a great man you probably heard of, Jonathan Edwards. Uh, preached a sermon, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. It was a message kind of like this. <laughs> he, he quoted the scripture, let's see if I have it here. I think I do. About the, maybe I did, I don't know what it is. But there, the scripture said, oh, here it is, Psalms 73, 18. This quote I have from the Living Bible, it says, What a slippery slope they are on. Suddenly God will send them sliding over the edge of the cliff and down to their destruction. He talked about the slippery slope that so many people are on in the world today. Playing games with their salvation. Pay, playing games with eternity. They think they can handle a little bit of the world and still be saved. They, they can still hang on to some things they want to hang on to, and they're safe. I saw a sign on the church marquee years ago I never forgot. It said, if you let the devil ride, he'll end up driving. All right. And you know it's really the That's truth. That's the truth. Christians go out and they say, I can hang out where the world hangs out and I'll be okay. I mean, that's the way the world is. We have to go out of the darkness and let our light shine. Really? Are you getting up in the bar and preaching the word of God or, or witnessing the people about Jesus? Are you posing it up to your drinks and acting like they're acting? Come on now. Mm -hmm. You say well, you're just being holier than thou art and trying to judge me. I don't judge anybody. Come on. Jesus is the judge. Come on. The word of God is the judge. And, and, and he's the one who's standing before, not me. The Jonathan Jonathan uh, Edwards preached that that God is a God of love, but he quoted many scriptures about the anger of God. When God's had enough, he's had enough, and there will be a payday someday. Is there a slippery slope in your life today? Come on, preach. Are you holding anger in your heart towards somebody and you won't let it go? Are you holding unforgiveness in your heart and you just won't let it go? Oh, yes. Bless Are you holding bitterness and resentment in your heart and you won't let it go? Are you having a big, giant pity party? Come on. And feeling sorry for yourself all the time. Saying, somebody said, woe is me, nobody loves me, everybody hates me. I, I'm just going to curl up like a worm and die, something like that. <laughs> If, if you're living feeling sorry for yourself, if you're living thinking you're a victim of choices other people made, 
Come on. If you're living with, with uh, uh, all anything in your heart that is against God, if, you're, if you have an immoral thought life, if, if, if you have a, a demonic thought life that you're hiding before people, I don't know what it is. Is it pornography? Is it watching things you shouldn't watch, reading things you shouldn't read? Is it talking in a way you shouldn't talk? I don't know what is a slippery slope in your life. The Lord is saying, get rid of the slippery slope and get your feet on solid ground. The solid ground is for saving yes. things. Yes. And staying close to Jesus and honoring Hallelujah. Jesus in your life. Hallelujah. Um, who will not be saved? Anybody who doesn't run into the arms of Jesus and hang on. And I, and I, I want to add on to something I said, Senator. If you think you're a victim of your past and your circumstances, and you're going around and just ruining your life, and you keep nursing it and rehearsing it and crying about it and going on about it, you need to get over yourself. All right. Come on. Good preaching. You think all of us here have been through things we could tell you about. We've all been betrayed. We've all been lied on. We've all been cheated. We've all been disappointed. We've all been hurt. And you know what? We betray other people. We've hurt other people. We've offended other people. Whether we knew it or not, we've all done it. Sure, sure. That's true, Diana. It's true. There's a day when you have to say, I let it all go. I just leave it with Jesus. Jesus come into my heart and my life. Heal me where I need to be healed. Fix me where I need to be fixed. Fix us, Lord. Fix but I'm not looking back over my shoulder like Lot's wife and rehearsing the past forever and ever and being sorry for what it used to be. I'm looking ahead. Yes. I'm keeping my eyes on the captain of yes. my salvation. He's going to get me over the yes, Lord. Waters. He's going to take me the storm. He's going to give me strength when I'm weak. He's going to give me courage when I'm afraid. He's never going to leave. He's never going to betray me. He's never going to disappoint me. He's never going to lie on me. He's only going to help me get to the other side. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Well, I could go on about this a lot. But I'm going to read you what I think is the scariest scripture in the Bible. <laughs> Probably some of you know what I'm going to read. It comes from Matthew 7, 21. Jesus said, he mourned people a lot. He loved them, and he shot straight from the head. You know, he said it like it was. He wanted to call some religious leader a hypocrite and a demon out of the pit of hell. You are the father of the devil. He said it. Yeah. You know, he just said it the yeah. way it was. But Matthew seven twenty one. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But the one who does the will of my Father, Come on. on that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in thy name, cast out demons in your name? And then I will proclaim to them, I never knew you. Depart from me. Man, that just makes chills go up and down my back. It makes me evaluate my own Sure. Purposes and motives sure. and why I do things and why we keep doing what we do. Is sure. it a religious show? Come on. Are we even trying to fool ourselves into making us think that we act a certain way and do certain things that we're okay? It's time to examine our hearts. It's true. Examine our hearts, even those of us who we know we're saved. Today is a day to examine our hearts and if there's anything in our hearts or lives between us and Jesus and fulfilling his perfect will for our lives, we need to get it out because we're at the end of the age. The rapture can happen any second, I believe. Uh, we can die at any second. We're at the end of the age. We're all going to die. And today is the day to get right with the Lord. Come on. And not only for your sake, it's for all the people you can reach, for all the people you can touch. Yes, yes. God does love you. He has an amazing plan for your life. Mm -hmm. Every one of us has gifts and talents and abilities that God has given.
given us uniquely to be used for His honor and glory and praise. We worship. We Hallelujah. Praise, we pray. We Hallelujah. hear, sing, we witness, we give, we go, we help. All in the name of the Lord. And today is a day yes. to be stirred up on the inside. Amen. You know, we read the scripture that hell is stirring up itself to receive the wicked and enlarging itself. But we're praying for the Holy Spirit of the living God yes. to stir us up again. To bring us back to our first love. Hallelujah.
word of God. We didn't teach the word of God. And, uh, you know, I just, I just, while I'm rejoicing, what I, yet I felt a heaviness because in my heart, I felt God forgive us in America if we're not sincerely trying to give a balance back. We need all of what Jesus taught. Jesus said, if whosoever hear these sayings of mine and do them, I like them unto a wise man who builds his house upon a rock. And uh, you know what? I might not shout too high about hell, but I need to know about hell. Yeah, right and next week I'll shout with you about heaven. Come on. Yeah. Amen. I love you guys. Hey, Joe, come on down here and close us in prayer. You know you got to be the closer for that. I love everybody. Hey, Pastor Doug, it's supposed to be 50 degrees this week. Yeah. How about Wednesday night? It's 7 o'clock. And Pastor's doing an outstanding teaching series on Job. And you will be blessed. Come on out, people. Hallelujah.